All right, this is great. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, we are recording, so that's terrific. Uh, and we can, we'll have this recording available. Uh, and um, if folks want to review it or uh, whatnot for more information. I uh, just want to welcome everyone. Um, Dr. Julia Moffat, I'm Dean of the School of Health Sciences here at Stevens College. Uh, I'll be hosting the, the virtual open house today. We have a lot of great people on the call. So any of you who are prospective students can get all the information you need right here in this one uh, particular uh, open house. Um, I'm just gonna kind of give you a little bit of information about Stevens College. Uh, Susan, do you wanna share your, your slide deck? It should be up. Yeah, great, awesome. So uh, Stevens College is uh, second oldest women's college in the country, and most of you uh, who are alums know all about the uh, Stevens College being a leader in health information administration. We were one of the first programs in the 70s, and then uh, we, were, we were the first accredited program that I'm aware of uh, and through an organization that then eventually became KHIM, which is the current accrediting body. And now we have launched a new Health Information Management Master's program that Dr. Susan Foster is our inaugural uh, director uh, has taken charge of and um, that's why you're here to learn about that program. So uh, Dr. Foster has been in working in the health information management industry for quite some time. She was a, a, also a director of a, an undergraduate health administration administration program, health information administration program. Uh, Missouri Western it came to us from Missouri Western and now she has designed and has launched our master's program our inaugural master's program so uh, Susan's going to take over and tell you all about uh, our HIM program we have some alums on the call today too that can, can share their information and perspective and then we also have um, uh, Toya Wynn our, our uh, admissions contact and, uh, for HIM can also help you, as well as other representatives of Stevens College, and uh, we, sh we have their information here in the chat. So hopefully, if you have any questions, we can answer all your questions right here today so you can uh, make an informed decision about things. But we're excited to have you here on the call. So uh, do you wanna take it away, Susan, and, and begin? Okay. Thanks. Here. Here we go. Thank you, Julia. Um, well, first you want to think about what are the benefits of online education? Um, obviously, cost and time savings. You know, you can still work full time while attending. Um, you don't have to worry about that time spent commuting to the college campuses, um, the cost of transportation, finding a parking place. That can be challenging at some uh, campuses. Also, the flexibility of online education. Um, as long as you have your computer and internet access, you have the ability to access your online classes. You can even do this from the comfort of your own home, on your own time. Also, um, <clears throat> online education allows you to engage with students who have similar educational and career goals that span the globe. Um, it's not just one area anymore. Uh, so you have connections around the world using technology and a professional association. Also workforce development. Um, as most of us have seen with the current situation, working at home has become uh, almost pretty much the normal. So gaining direct experiential learning skills and uh, developed with virtual work will give you as a graduate of an online program a competitive edge in addressing the changing needs of employers in a global context. Um, I expect that um, in the future, uh, employees with skills um, in advanced online interaction and online work will likely become an essential skill for most postgraduate professionals. Also, quality and cost matters. We have over 40 years of experience in delivering a quality distant education program and our Masters of Science and in Health Information Management program will continue to build upon that legacy. We are committed to both quality and affordability. And I would just like to point out that currently, it costs less than 20,000 to complete 
our master's program if you attend full time. Um, we also have small classes, which allows more one-on-one -on -one attention and faculty mentoring. So it's a 100% online graduate program. Uh, you can work full-time, part-time, or not work uh, while you're completing your program. Flexible um, to study from anywhere. It is a 36 credit hour program that can be completed in five semesters. This is continuing study because we do have summer semesters that are required. However, we do not require a GRE or a GMAT. We use um, eight week compressed courses um, to move you quicker and faster through the program. They are concentrated um, and we have them scheduled so that you do not have more than two at one time. Also, there's no waiting. You can begin this program spring, summer, or fall semesters. So it's a rolling admissions. Potentially, if you think about it, because we have eight week courses, um, there's actually five enrollment opportunities in an academic year because you can start at the beginning of a semester, a 16 week semester. Um, and if you don't take that first eight week course, you can also enroll and take the second eight week course. So there's, um, Lots of opportunity to begin your program. You don't have to wait. Here's a list of the uh, curriculum that's part of this master's program. Um, there's 12 courses that align with the AHIMA 2018 curricular competencies. And um, we did this because our ultimate goal is to have this program KHIM accredited, uh, hopefully in 2021. I want to point out also that our curriculum also includes informatics and data analytics uh, with a concentration on leadership skills or leading an organization rather than um, a department. So our curriculum has a more holistic view of healthcare and health information management. Also, our capstone one and two courses are all about research. Um, there will be a thesis project uh, and completion. And our goal is for our students to present their research and also build the um, body of knowledge for all HIM professionals. Yeah, real quick, if I wanna just uh, kind of interject there, uh, having the, the, the master's program as a research, have a, a, an authentic research component of that master's program and an actual thesis is, uh, I think part of what, uh, you know, the quality and rigor that we have for Stevens College uh, was important uh, to me as a dean. I was very excited about having this uh, as part of the, the um, curriculum. And uh, we just had our School of Health Science Research Symposium, which we were able to do deliver all virtually online. And we're, we're hoping our students in our HIM program uh, we definitely want them presenting their capstone projects or research projects within that that environment, and I think that's one of the things that can kind of help set you out, set you apart from other individuals looking to to uh, gain employment in other areas uh, to become a leader in health information management. And that, that leadership skill, which Stevens College is so well known for, we have that embedded into the curriculum as part of the research and thesis project. So. Yes, I think that's very important. I, I do agree. Um, I would like to see our students become leaders, um, not only in their, in their positions, but also leaders in education of other HIM professionals. Um, we need it, it's desperate. Um, and I think that by this program, our graduates will stand out um, and represent that well. So why Stevens College? We have a reputation for quality online HIM education. Um, as I mentioned, we have a rigorous cu uh, curriculum which aligns with competencies. Um, this also aligns with our goal to have the program accredited so that those graduates who do not have the RHIA credential will be eligible to sit for that. So that is um, a goal that we're striving for. We do have an innovative program we use technology, um, which a lot of us have become adept in using um, with what we're doing now. 
with the current situation. Um, we do a lot of hands-on activities, and uh, I think that um, embraces the applied learning theory, which I'm an advocate of. Also, I mentioned that we do give three course credits towards the master's program if you have current RHAA credentials, and there's a, an application process to go through. And again, it's all about advancing research skills and leadership skills and learning health to manage health data and information. Um, it's research-based and there is no practicums. So that is the advantage of this program too. Why a graduate degree? Um, sometimes you get asked this a lot. Why should I even look for an HIM graduate degree? There's so many other graduate degrees. Um, I have to speak the fact that um, in 2018, healthcare industry became the number one employer. So there is a high demand for uh, healthcare workers. And because of the increase in healthcare services due to an aging population, there will be a, a demand for health information professionals as well, because those will be those professionals needed to navigate patient data and information. And then again, big data, it's out there. Everyone is collecting data in some way and healthcare is not excluded. Um, so it's important to learn how to analyze the data uh, for useful information. And then not only create that information, but then to present that information um, so that others can learn from that um, to be used in decision-making. Uh, that's a big play and what's happening in healthcare. Also, there was a recent 2019 uh, AHIMA member salary survey, and all of the, the members, 40% of the members actually indicated that their education level was what influenced uh, whether or not they were promoted. So having a graduate degree will also make you more marketable. And then the career outlook is great greater than average actually, uh, according to the Bureau of Labor. And so I have a slide here about what can you do with an HIM degree. And I just wanted to point out that health information manager or administrator ranks in the top five best healthcare careers for the future. And here are three job descriptions, um, things that you can do with an HIM degree. And of course the top one is the a medical and health service manager position. Um, it's expected to have an 18% growth in jobs. It's also one of the highest paying positions and it does require um, a master's degree typically. Also with the stockpiling of healthcare data, there's an increased need for skilled operations research analysts and this is the job description that the Bureau of Labor and Statistics provides. And it can be a subject matter expert in different um, operations. This one I included healthcare. It's those analysts who will be used to um, develop useful information from the data and drive decisions. There's a projected 20%, 26%, excuse me, increase in this job market. And then there is always going to be a continued need for the medical record and health information technicians. Um, these are chart analysts, HIM supervisors, medical coders, documentation integrity, and those who maintain patient information. So here are some possible career paths for HIM graduates. I took this from the AHIMA career map. Um, these are just a few that indicated that a master's degree was required or preferred. So as you can see, there are um, high leadership positions as a director, vice president, a systems director, which would be over more than one department, um, such as a corporation, um, chief compliance officer, that's also something, an area that is over a larger, much higher uh, organization. So as you can see, there's several different types of career paths one can take. And now we do have two, I'm, I'm happy to say two Stephen College HIM alums. Um, first we'll have Rebecca Morton speak to us. She's a 
1984 graduate of the uh, Bachelor's of Science program here. And I am going to, I'm going to unshare so we can see Rebecca. Right. <laughs> if I can get my meeting controls up. You ready? Stop share. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Um, well, I did start in the Stevens program and I was in the very first class, that the very first on-site class that they ever had. And I was never more excited about doing anything and going somewhere as I was to start that class. Um, I had worked at University of Missouri Healthcare for seven years when I began um, my, the Stevens program. I had gotten a degree at MU and had also um, gotten my RHIT through AHIMA. And at the time, it really, it, there wasn't any management in that. So the Stevens program was exactly what I was looking for. And I looked at some of the residential programs across the United States, but this program really just said wow to me. I could stay in my job, I could go to classes, I could, there were a blend of on-site classes and also, um, you know, working from home classes. It wasn't really online as much as it is now, um, but it really fit my need and I wanted to be promoted within my organization so working and going to school at the same time were, were really, was really something that I think the administration felt very strongly that it was a good thing for me to do. I um, became the interim manager about six months after starting the Stevens program, interim manager of the HIM program at University Hospital. And um, I stayed in that position for three years and as soon as I graduated, they uh, named me as the permanent manager. So it just goes to show you that if you really have the, the drive and, and you get the education that good things can happen to you. Um, I stayed in that position for um, 37 years, uh, became director about seven years ago and um, became director of a, as a corporate department. I also hired um, four Stevens grads into our department, all of them in leadership positions. Three of them managed um, different areas of the health information department. And one of them was a manager over our technical component. They, she, she did all of the technical things that needed to be done for the department. Um, a couple of things I wanted to, to mention. The reason that I, I chose Stevens was at the time, Stevens really was very innovative. I mean, no one was offering anything quite like what Stevens had. And, um, you know, they really set the bar for a blended program like you see today. And I feel like anybody who starts this program will see the caring and compassion that they have for their students. I mean, we always felt like we were the top you know, their top priority and and just helping us along with the program, especially since it was a new program at that time. And I know as I see, you know, the students that are coming out of the program, the ones that I hired and ones that are going other places, I see that same, that they've gotten that same care and compassion from the faculty that I had received. Um, one of the things I I think that the flexibility of the program, but more importantly, it is very important. More importantly, I think that the quality of the curriculum and the quality of the faculty is what would drive me to want to start with this program. The other thing I think you that I really wish that I would have had the opportunity to have been in this program. You know, the having the undergraduate degree was great, except now to get anywhere in leadership in an organization, especially at an academic health center like I was working at, you really have to have a master's degree. And I had started working on my master's degree at the University of Missouri, kind of got derailed when I got married. So I never did quite finish, <laughs> but I would have really wanted to have finished that program. But even more important, I would have rather stayed in health information management or the health information field. There's just been so many things that have happened that you really need more than just ex what you learn from experience. You really need to have that education. And a perfect example of that is the clinical documentation integrity. That was one of the things that, you know, carried me through, 
through the kind of the end of my career as I saw many things while I was there. But, um, you know, that was kind of the shining star that um, I could carry forward and, and give to the organization when I left there. So, but I, I you know, I, I could, I cannot even express what the experience, what my experience was at Stevens. It was the perfect thing for me. And I think that anyone who, once they start the program, will realize that, that it is a very good fit for them also. Does hey, you Becky, have any can, questions for me? Can, can you tell us how many years experience you have in HIM? Did you say that? Um, I st well, I started working in the department. I have 45 years experience in HIM. And of those 45 years, um, I became a supervisor a year and a half after I started working in the department and then became assistant manager um, three years later and then manager two years after that. So, uh, you know, it, it's luck, uh, you, you know, if you're in the right place at the right time, you know, I just happened to be there, happened to have just gotten my RHIA. So I, I kept moving through the organization. And, and as you know, how, how many changes happened with documentation over, over that span of time, you know, you had to, you had to keep up with it and you had, you had to have that education. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Becky? Thanks so much, Becky. That, that was really exciting to sort of hear your evolution. I hadn't heard the whole story uh, to this point about that, but I yeah, does any, does, go ahead. My dad was a hospital administrator. He always wanted me to go into health information management. I was like, eh. when, as soon as I left college, <laughs> that's where I headed to get a job, was in health information management, so. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> Anyone um, have any questions? Well, Becky's a great connection, so keep her in mind as you progress through your career. She's awesome mentor, and um, I know I have asked her several times for advice. Um, our next alum is Carrie Compton. Uh, Carrie is a 1994 graduate of our uh, bachelor's program, and she's also a 2007 graduate of our MBA program, which was in clinical information systems. So, Carrie, take it away. All right. Thank you so much for asking me to join. I'm always excited when I get the opportunity to talk about uh, Stevens. And so my journey is a little similar to Becky's, um, but a little bit different. So I actually um, got my RHIT through uh, the um, AHIMA accreditation, and we actually had a position open at the facility where I currently work, and I was passed over for that position because I didn't have an RHIA. So that's kind of what got me looking for that type of degree and, um, you know, choosing Stevens, and I chose them because when I looked at the formatting of the program, it just fit in with my lifestyle and what was going in my life, going on in my life at that time. I mean, I was working full time. Um, I had a child, so that that format um, fit into my life very well. Um, and then once I finished that degree, I just had decided that I really wanted to go on. Um, and continue my education. And of course, at that time, Stevens didn't have a master's degree in HIM, but they did have the MBA degree. So I focused in that area and took the, the emphasis on the clinical information systems uh, area. And that actually landed me a position as an IT director along my career path. Um, so I have been at my current facility for 34 years total. Um, I was actually here for 24 years initially and left and went, and I work in behavioral health. So I left the behavioral health side, went to work on the acute side. I was there for about four years. That's where I was actually an HIM director and eventually took over the IT department at that uh, acute facility. But I really had a love for behavioral health. So um, the facility I had previously worked for had asked me to return. So I came back to um, 
the facility and I've been back for about for 10 years now. And as an administrative officer, I am part of the leadership team here and oversee several uh, departments within the organization. And again, I think my career path, my degrees that I have received at Stevens certainly helped me get to the spot I am in today. And I chose to stay with Stevens for my master's because I did like the, the way the bachelor's pro program was set up. So that's kind of why I stuck uh, with them and completed my MBA there. Does anybody have any questions for Carrie? I, I think both Carrie and Becky kind of highlight uh, just listening to them and their story, like one of our major strengths at Stevens College, and that is the, the connections with our alumni network um of individuals who are successful out there doing great things in the healthcare industry and that's one of the advantages you i think you'd have in a program like stevens college that can kind of connect you with uh uh individuals like becky and carrie uh that that you know that's that's a, a definite uh advantage that we would have in my opinion <laughs> well i know that both um becky and carrie are very active in their state association as well as their regional association mm -hmm. and then the national association so that is that unique networking that you can get with um it, it's now global so there is so many uh, different professionals that you can connect with um, they're great for mentoring um, and just sharing knowledge so you know, as a student, that was something that I was told to do. I'm, an, a Steve, I'm a Stevens alum. I started late in my education. I was a factory worker for eight years and it closed down because of imports in the late 80s, early 90s. And they said, we'll retrain you, pick a college. So I picked a local college and, and did an associates program, but I knew that I wanted more because there was an instructor there at that college who was an RHIT. And she says, you need to go this way, Susan, you need to go this way. Um, I took her advice, but I hung out and I waited until Stevens College. I knew I wanted to go to Stevens because of their reputation. But I waited until 2003 when they went officially online because I was a full-time worker. I had three children at home and a family that I took care of and I couldn't afford to take off and go to classes. In fact, my boss told me, you can't go to class, I need you here. So that's when I started Stevens. Um, they were very transfer friendly, which was great because I transferred that degree in and I had, it, it's, a, it was, it's different than what a lot of the public universities because they require those 42 to 50 credit hours of general studies class, whereas Stevens, only requires 31 and so there's so much more that you learn about the subject matter or about H or health information um, so you don't have a lot of filler classes really um, and I I really like that so when I graduated I took off one semester and dove right back into the MBA because they didn't have the you know didn't have an HIM master's but I did want my master's degree because like everyone else spoke about I wanted, I wanted a leadership position. I wanted director. I wanted to move up. So I knew I had to have a master's degree. So for various reasons, people choose the types of master's degrees that they want. And many times it's based on wanting promotion. I want to go somewhere. I'm not the status quo. I want more. So those are just some things to think about. So I'm gonna let Brenda answer, uh, speak a little, answer a couple uh, questions that we have. Um, Brenda is an HIM alum. She graduated mm -hmm. from Stevens College with a bachelor's and a master's degree. She works for Compass Great. Health Network. She has over 33 years of service in healthcare. So let's stop sharing so we can see everyone. And I'll ask some questions and let Brenda answer them. 
You bet. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and your current job and how long you've been working in healthcare, the different types of jobs you've had, how you started. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'll try to make this, um, I'll summarize it. Um, and thank you, Susan. Um, I started working uh, at another uh, a rural behavioral health in, uh, in 1987 as a file clerk. So essentially, I started at the very bottom of uh, the, you know, the totem pole, I guess. And I just had a passion for uh, HIM, or we called records, you know, back in those days. Um, and my career um, just kind of, you know, I just, you know, you've got to have passion when you when you work, and it just kind of progressed from there. Um, I worked, uh, went from um, HIM as a tech to HIM uh, um, two, then I went to director within a matter of a couple of years. And then my uh, career just kind of, once again, kind of, I, I just, it just went. I mean, I was very fortunate. I feel very fortunate today to have had uh, a great career and continue to to do that but i do base it's on uh you know my um learning and what i finally realized is that if i was going to go anywhere else um, or to be a c-suite material which i have been uh, i actually made it to c-suite um, was vice president uh, over um, him and supportive services and I did not limit myself to just HIM, uh, but again, began to explore other areas, the electronic health records, um, you know, analytics, um, all of that. So feel very fortunate. I actually did leave uh, that organization, went to work for um, Compass Health, uh, started out as a, a, as a um, person so I had multiple EHRs and systems of, of health information management to bring together that's why I was hired and what's happened is right now I have actually progressed back to ironically the same title that I had when I was at my previous employer of 30 some years so I'm now vice president of health information management and supportive services um, I just one of and you know just been very fortunate i don't ever take that for granted of the career but once i realized that i had to have my education um i did get my i started out looking at my rhit um but then i switched to my rhia because i wanted that masters and stevens to me was um the ultimate uh, HIM program to, to pursue. Um, and that's why I loved, in my world, um, I had to have the availability of online learning because I was incredibly busy, still incredibly busy to this day. Um, but I knew Stevens was at the top of the, the heap and that's where I wanted to go um, with the luxury of online learning, which you do have to be disciplined to do that, but I found that to work for me. And I actually did progress knowing that uh, with the, um, the help of others that I had to progress to my master's if I was going to actually be at that C-suite level. Um, that was just very, very important to me and the online learning and the continued to learn um, which I believe learning is a lifelong uh, journey. So um, Stevens, I believe Stevens contributed to my career because the program uh, that I both of my bachelor's and my master's was has greatly contributed to the success of my career. Well, thank you, Brenda. So just one last thing that you might say to someone who is interested in a graduate program or pursuing the HIM career, what, what advice would you give them? You need to pursue your education. The more that you can learn, and I will tell you, let me give you a little example right now. Uh, I didn't ever limit myself to just HIM. Um, let's talk about, Susan actually talked about uh, data. I'm actually over data reporting in my organization. And my skills that I learned as um, the integrity of the, I actually 
an integrity person too. Her job is to actually ensure that our data integrity um, is, you know, of the highest quality. So that's what she does. But I have a whole department of data writers and I'm talking, I don't know, I didn't know SQL or C Sharp or any of those things, but I knew what the information was. Um, and so I think that for as uh, people that are pursuing, don't limit yourself, um, don't limit, because with HIM, you would be surprised, data integrity collections, the information flows through an organi a healthcare organization at the very point of the person actually arriving at the organization. And for HIM to be, you need to have all those skills uh, in order to make sure uh, that that information within that healthcare organization is accurate and because um, people rely on us, including the providers. It's true. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Brenda. It's wonderful to have you here with us today. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Stevens alum too, and I'm right with you on that. Um, I chose Stevens when they went online. I waited until 2003 and they were online and that's what I did because I was a working adult with a family and it fit in perfectly yep. um, with my, my needs. So thank you very much for joining us. I, have, I just have one quick question, thank Brenda. You. Maybe you could uh, sure. address for students who are looking for uh, a a program like what are some of the things they should be thinking about as they're looking for a master's program like what what you know if you if you knew if you knew now you know if you, <laughs> you, you knew then what you know now what how would you have changed or, or thought about or maybe what advice would you give to students looking for uh, a program uh, to continue their education yeah well it's really interesting that's a really good question when I was looking at all um, or, you know, like what, you know, that Stevens is offering in this program because, you know, you talked about data analysis, you talked about privacy, you talked about all of those things. You can go down revenue, you can go down, you know, all of that. I mean, it's very important to look for those programs that offer that, particularly in the area of data. I think mm -hmm. that that is a field for HIV that we really that we don't put enough focus on because uh, I, I mean to me that's every we furnish even in I'll give you an example in COVID uh, we rely on daily data now to know where we are um, all of the things that have been outlined in the curriculum I mean I went from you know the bachelor's to the leader the leadership which that is also a big thing is focusing on leadership um, that to me has just been the world and actually really helped to excel my career. Um, make sure it's well-rounded, privacy, security, um, all of those things so that you don't get pigeonholed, I guess, in what I want to say, into one specific area. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. That's great okay. advice. Thanks. Yeah. That's what I think is what's great about HIM because, you know, even when you're teaching an associate and then bachelor's and a master's as I've gone through as an educator. Um, students come into a, the program thinking I want this one particular type of career, get into a class of a specific subject matter that they really like and decide, oh, I'm going this way. You know, I, I've learned everything about HIM, but I want to do health data analytics or I want to be a privacy officer or you know, I want to be a compliance officer. So they get all these different ideas and things. And that's what I think is so great about HIM as a whole. So this is real quick. I'm just going to go over this briefly because all of this information is available on our website. And yes, we have rolled out a new website. Um, and also it's in our student handbook. But here's the basic admission requirements. Uh, obviously, you have to have a bachelor's degree. We look at your GPA. Uh, we would uh, prefer a 3.0, um, although we will work with students um, under a uh, provisional admissions. And um, then there are some specific undergrad courses that are prerequisites that are required, and they're listed there. And if you don't have those, for those who transfer, uh, or who, um, excuse me, 
who apply for admissions who do not have a previous HIM degree, um, they may or may not have these classes, but Stevens College does offer these in the undergraduate, so we can accommodate you in that way too. How to apply, and, and you know, our admissions um, assistant counselor can help you with this too. Uh, obviously, if you need financial aid, you wanna do a FAFSA. Um, there is a link to an online application, which would require you submit a, a current resume or a CV. We need two references, their contact information, because we send them um, a link and have them fill out a form. Your statement of purpose, and, and why, why do we want a statement of, statement of purpose? I wanna know why you're seeking a graduate degree, what are your expectations from this graduate degree, and where do you wanna go with your career? And these are things that help me get to know you better as a student so that I can better advise you and guide you through the program. And then of course, you have to submit your official transcripts from your bachelor's degree. And our uh, admissions counselor for the HIM program is Toya Wynn, and Toya is on the call today with us. Here is her contact information. Um, you can email her directly at twin at stevens.edu, or actually you can use the online at stevens.edu, and she does get those also. She gets notifications if you inquire about the program or if you begin an application. And then she notifies me, the program director, and the registrar's office that an application has been completed and it needs to be reviewed. And she can help you and answer any questions that you may have about applying uh, for admissions here at Stevens. Here's just some frequently asked questions and the answers are right there. Financial aid, yes, in the form of student loans or if you apply for scholarships. Um, can you make payments? Yes, we do have a payment program. Can you transfer graduate course credit? That seems to be a question um, because someone has gone out and got a graduate degree and it's not the one they need. So. It's on a student by student basis, but yes, we will transfer up to nine credit hours of graduate uh, coursework. And then is there a time limit to complete? Yes, we require you to complete the program within five years. This is very easy to do, even if you attend part-time. And is there an application fee? No, not at this time. We're not taking application fees. Here's my contact information, my email address, my direct phone number, and this is a link that will take you to the new website with information about the program. So does anybody have any questions they want to ask now? Oh, while you're thinking of uh, or questions, you know, you can use our chat function here or just, uh, uh, just you can ask us orally. I, I wanted to kind of point out, um, one of the strengths of the program is the ease and flexibility with the eight week classes to be able to take the class, finish the class and move on. Uh, we felt that was very important for our working adults uh, to be able to balance your work life balance. Uh, another huge strength, I believe, of the program is the instructional design that Dr. Foster has taken in putting together all the courses. Uh, Susan's in, has been trained in Quality Matters and Quality Matters is sort of like the best practice for online learning. Uh, so I think the courses are very well laid out. Instructional design is really nice and it, organized and that kind of helps you as uh, someone who's busy working, uh, who needs to know uh, and stay on task with things. So I, I feel like those are, those are strengths of the program, uh, having known people who've gone through online programs and have done some uh, online teaching myself. So let's go ahead and open up any questions you all have for any of our panelists here today. Uh, any, anyone that's here on the Zoom call, we can answer for you uh, at all. Please uh, let us know. I'm you just know, I'm curious. Not, to, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to add. You know, sometimes um, students are, get concerned about eight-week courses and the fact that they are compressed. But if you think about the fact that you can concentrate on one subject matter, 
you know, the, the area that you're studying for eight weeks and you're not stretched out over three or four different subject matters whenever you're taking multiple 16 week classes. It's, um, it's different. And to me, I like that. I took eight week courses. So then I knew what I was studying. I was going through, even though it was compressed in that work week, um, I didn't have to do this and then go open and go into a, another different subject matter and try to concentrate on that. I don't know, it, it just, I know it frightens students sometimes because of the eight week and they think, oh, there's too much to do. I'm not gonna be able to do it. They cram too much in. But I don't think you'll find that in these program, in, in this particular program at all. I'm very conscious of the assignments to not overdo and to make sure that these assignments align with an objective. Why are you doing this assignment? So that you know it's not just busy work. That's something you hear from some students is, you know, I think it's all busy work. So uh, Amber has a great question. Uh, she wants to know how interactive are the classes with the instructors? Meaning are there videos explaining topics or is it a more self-teaching type of approach? It's a great um, question. It is. It's outlined um, in various formats because learners have re different requirements. Some can read and not really need to have the spoken. Although I will tell you in our Canvas class, um, in, our, in our LMS, it's set up so even anything that is written, there is option for it to be read to you. So you still hear it. Um, but yes, we do use videos of various sorts. It's very interactive. Links to um, information, the way it's written out, it's not just a PowerPoint, a quiz, and an assignment link. I've taken extensive time in building these so that when you start the first module, it flows through. And there's not a lot of going around and, and what do I do? So um, it's something new that I am trying. It's different than any online class that I have ever taken. And I got this uh, information from a Quality Matters webinar that I attended. And I thought, I like the way that they're talking and I like what they're doing. So I wanted to introduce that. And so far, the students who have taken the classes um, have given high evaluations that they, they like the format, they like the way it worked. Does that answer your question? Thanks, Amber. Yeah, I think that's one of the things uh, is exciting is always looking for current best practices and reinventing uh, courses and keeping content fresh, keeping students engaged. Uh, instead of, like you said, I, we've all sort of seen some courses out there, online courses, where information is just posted and you have to read through and take a quiz and then you're done. That's not really kind of immersing yourself in the actual content is what really solidifies uh, the learning experience uh, so that, you know, you'll have that information when you go out there in the workforce to be able to really apply the information if you don't practice it, applying it in the classes, then it's gonna make it difficult to translate that information into the workforce. And I think that's a, that's a good, uh, it's a strength of the program for your instructional design in the courses. I uh, also spend time with students. You know, I have hours posted uh, and students are available to go in and schedule time. I have it blocked off my calendar and um, I have a, uh, in the advisee class, there's a link that will take them to my calendar and they can schedule any kind of appointment they want with me, whether they want to just something via email, via email, we always, we do that anyway. But if they want a Zoom meeting, they want a phone call, they want to spend time discussing, um, they schedule and I do. I've, I have uh, one student who likes evening time. So we pick an evening time and we share conversation about um, the expectations of assignments and why you're doing the assignments. I've walked her through some things. So, you know, that's unique to me in that we have small classes and we're able to do that. And I'm always available for my students. 
any other questions uh, any of you can think of that you might would like you would like to know more information about? I'm curious uh, if the uh, prospective students want to share what is the kind of top thing you're looking for when you're looking for a program, a master's program. Uh, what, you know, what is the number one thing you're looking at? Is it flexibility? Is it uh, the, the, the way the course is designed and like the interactive components? Is it the location? Is it the smaller class size? Um, the particular area? I'm just curious to know uh, what you all are looking for in a master's program or fit for you uh, as a learner. anyone wants to share I think for me potentially is um, what opportunities of the grand scheme of all of it um, would present me if I was to complete you know deciding the hardest part for me right now is deciding what specifically I want to get my master's in um, and then the long-term gain that I would get from that, from all that hard work. So that's why I, I wanted more information on how specifically does this program differ from an MHA or a public health degree, you know, in okay. addition to the bachelors that we already have. Okay, okay. that's a great question. Uh, maybe, uh, Becky, do you want to share perhaps like uh, as a health information management individual working in health information management, sort of like what your day to day is and utilize like your, sort of like the tasks that you do on a day to day basis that might help Amber a little bit? I will tell you, um, <clears throat> if they would have had this program 10 years ago, I would have been in first in line to, to go into this program. You know, the, getting your MHA and, and MBA or the public health um, is good, but I feel like you are going to have more opportunities with this because of how the um, health information management is evolving. I mean, the la from 1997 until the day I walked out the door, I was the queen of the electronic health record, and that included the data that went along with it. And no one else really has the specificity that I had or that I could bring to that job. And I think, um, you know, just the, with the HIPAA, with all of the rules now, and, and all the changes that even the COVID-19 is going to bring, because look at how many rules have been relaxed just for that in healthcare. So, and, and with the clinical documentation integrity, you know, Medicare, CMS for Medicaid and Medicare services, they're going to be coming off with um, a lot more restrictive things that physicians can do and from what hospitals can do. And I just feel like this program really gives you more of the specificity for health information, document management, and health integrity. Plus, and as I always tell my staff, I, you know, health information is the core to everything. I mean, I, I knew every department manager because they needed something that I had. And, and my staff are the same way. I mean, we were on every committee, we were on every, you know, anything that had to do with, with anything the physician was gonna do, they always wanted us to make sure that what the physicians were doing was appropriate, legal, and, and would get payment. That was probably the most important part, so. And the other thing too, Amber, I will tell you is, you know, I, I evolved more into the revenue cycle, uh, more into revenue cycle than I really would have ever expected I would have. And there were a lot of things that, you know, expanded from HIM that they don't know in patient accounts. I mean, I was very surprised or in, in the finance area that I knew simply because I had, you know, the education and, and the kind of the global, um, aspect of, of what they needed and and more much more so than they did so I really felt like I you know I could live in those other worlds just as easily as I could live in my own world does that help I think uh, you you it was interesting that you brought up public health because I do think uh, health information management has a big impact on public health and that's why we have the research component uh, so if that's an area that you're really interested in, that, that 
you can kind of emphasize that in your capstone in terms of information that uh, uh, like what services are being delivered, what's being effective, what patients are being impacted. That's information that can then feed back and uh, health information, uh, uh, master's in health information management, someone in that in role can help answer those questions, set up, set up uh, research questions, pull the data, and then answer the question. And correct me if I'm wrong with that, Susan. That's absolutely correct. And I will tell you this, um, because of my past experience, this program has a little bit of epidemiology in it. I mean, it introduces students to that. It introduces students to public health, public informa health informatics, uh, population health. Um, those are big terms that are happening out there. So it does have a component of that in there. Um, I, I have uh, researched text and, and uh, areas so that I can bring that into this degree, making it a little bit different than most because, uh, and I know you'll know this, in the bachelor's program, they just, they just touch on some of those types of things. They don't go in depth to the much, to the uh, extent of what you might learn in this program. Because I think that's important to give you more of a holistic view of healthcare and the information and how you can make an impact with it. That's great, thank you all so much. Uh, any other questions that we have that has, have popped up? Yeah, so all of, all of your financial aid questions, uh, you can contact uh, finaid, F-I-N-A-I-D, at stevens.edu. They can answer all your financial aid questions. Uh, we really appreciate everyone's time spending your lunch hour with us uh, to learn more about health information management and Stevens College. And uh, feel free to contact any of us for further information. Uh, we'd love to have you join us in our program in the fall. and. Uh, Susan can help you uh, sort things out in terms of, uh, of uh, about if you have an RHAI credential or something along those lines, we can get that, that figured out and uh, application process, admissions, financial aid, all of us can work together, kind of work together as a team to onboard students and, and get you ready. So be sure and let us know, okay? Anything else anyone wants to add before we conclude the session today? All right, thank you all. Everyone have a great day. Thanks to our alums for joining us today. It was great to see you all again. We'll talk to you later. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.